What's going on guys, smarthelping.com here. I've got a really cool update to the three statement financial model. This template has had a lot of, uh, uh, it's got a lot of good traction, so people are liking it. I'm seeing a lot of purchases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm spending time here to add better inventory logic. So right now, the model works perfectly fine, but what it does is it assumes the cash to pay for, for cost of goods sold goes out the month that it's actually sold. So that might be, that's fine for any business that doesn't have inventory or has inventory that's basically just in time. But if you have to hold inventory for, you know, weeks or months or, or even years, you're going to have to buy the inventory ahead of time and the cash flow for that needs to be accounted for in the cash flow statement in your balance sheet. So what I've done is I've added logic to account for all that. And what I've done is you can see in the cost of goods sold, there's two, two other cost of goods sold items that don't have to be related to inventory, but then this third row is all inventory. So generally, um, you know, when you sell things on the income statement, whatever it costs to buy that, that's a cost of goods sold. And that is essentially what the value of your inventory is or what it, you know, there's a whole bunch of logic behind inventory, but this is a high level, um, basically based on this cost goes sold. This is going to drive the cost to purchase however much inventory ahead of time. So I've just put in some low numbers here just so you can see the logic working. Um, you'd put in whatever is relevant for your situation. But notice how I have $15 coming out every month as a cost of goods sold. Well, let's say we had to buy this seven months ahead of time. So that is one, two, I think 105, one, two. That's 105. So in a cash flow statement, you want to see 105 going out in January. And then it's used over seven months and eventually goes to zero. And then in eight, in month eight, we purchase, you know, another seven months worth and so on. So I've built logic so this can happen and I'm going to show you exactly how. And the comp, the only complicated part it was to do this update was um, on the balance sheet. We have to actually now have an inventory account, which I added here. And this basically shows the amount you've bought less the amount that's been sold. And then that's basically your any monthly inventory balance. So it's always going to be uh, one month less than um, what you paid for. So like month one, we've bought, if you look at our... Here's the logic, and I just put it separately because it's actually pretty complicated, but you might find it useful for other models as well. Um, you can adjust this number here, and this all works on a monthly basis, and it, it will change based on your cost of goods sold amount. It'll sum up the amount you got to buy ahead of time and do even increments. So you can see here's your 105. That's showing the first you know seven months worth of inventory that you got to buy, and so on. If we change this to, say, four months, watch what happens. Oh, now look at we do it every fourth month. So, for, pay for we've got four months worth, and we buy another four months worth, and another four, and so on. So this is definitely advanced logic. It's going to give the model additional value. It's much better, I think, if you have obviously to deal with inventory purchases that happen, you know, not in the same month of sales. Uh, if you don't, then obviously it's not relevant in the model. Again, it works just fine. Um, and this won't affect negatively anything else in the, in the template. Um, so this is really nice. Now let's, sh let's see here. I'll show you what happened. So the cash flow. So because we're saying the cash flow is, you know, the, the cash going out for that happens in these increments rather than every month. Um, we had to get it to balance after actually at inventory account, which makes perfect sense because your cash is going down, but you actually haven't used all the inventory yet. You've only used a certain amount and the retained earnings is looking at, you can see the income statement is looking at the net income, which is affected by the cost of goods sold. So we have to actually have inventory balance here. If we want to balance the assets with the liabilities and equity. And you can see here our, our check is perfect. It took me a little bit to figure, make make all this work, but it makes complete perfect sense. And it's just another reason why these models are so complicated but so valuable is you really have to understand the accounting that's going on for this to make sense. 
So you can see in month one, January, we've paid out $60. And we've used 15 of it in month one. So on the balance sheet at the end of month one, we've now got 45 left. We use another 15. We got 30 left, another 15, 15 left, another 15. We now have zero. And the next month, we're going to have to go and buy that money month's worth again. And the idea is you're prepaying so that you have plenty of it. You basically are holding inventory so you don't run out. Um, so then in the, in the next month, we're, we'd buy 60 more. You get 15 coming out, and it just keeps doing that. And all these numbers will adjust. Let's say, let's put a big number in here. Let's say in month four, if we look at the balance sheet in month four, we've got 2.39 million in cash. Well, what happens if we actually, in that month, there's $500,000 of inventory going out. That means this would have had to have been bought. So if we go over here, oh, now look cash is down to 1.88 million in month four instead of what was it before 2.3 and we go forward and you can see that actually happens because that's in the fourth month that's in the first round of the first four months worth of purchases so we're actually buying it here using it and you can see it's going down by 15 after we buy it down down and then this month and then because april's the, the month we use that 500,000, it's used up here and then we're buying again, and it's just going on the logic. So it's really, really awesome. I'm pumped that this actually makes perfect sense. I'm pumped that I was able to do it because I was thinking about this for a while this past week and not sure exactly how to implement it, but it turns out it, it's really just beautifully fits in. It makes perfect sense. It, the model doesn't have to change much, and it's just an added um, added ability of the model everything else works just fine all the other stuff in it the uh the exit value you can still do an exit at any month let's say october you can see here nothing is messed up ending in october this all flows fine we're all balanced out here the annual will sometimes have inventory balance and it sometimes won't. It depends on how the months fall. If there is, if it's, if basically your purchases are going in between months, like if we do an odd number here, let's say it's uh, instead of four, let's do seven. Then the inventory annual, you see it's got balances here. And now this, other than that, this is also good to see, you know, if you're going to be carrying a balance and what that is over time on here but it's it's really interconnected between the cash the inventory and the retained earnings is the the main accounts that you'll see changes in based on um your cost of goods sold inventory stuff uh so yeah very cool i'm i'm just i'm excited that this all flowed nicely and i'm, I'm really happy that i was able to add this into here it makes it um really just more complete than it was but um yeah, I think it's great. Now, I hit, if you have purchases already, if I haven't sent it to you, which I have lists of people that bought it, I'll send it to them. If for whatever reason you don't get it, just email me. I'll send the new version to you, no problem. No extra charge. This model still only costs $45. Um, again, if you want to buy it, go to smarthelping.com. Or you can go to the link in the, in the YouTube box below. It's actually going to have a permanent link up here for the three, three statement financial model. But if you go to the financial models tab at the top, it's going to be under the financial tab here. And oh wait, where did, where did I put it? Oh, general business models and tools. So it's right there, the first one right now. Now if I add more to that, it could drop down. But it'll be on here. Just search, you know, three statement financial model. You could also use the search box up here, three statement, and it comes up here, and you purchase it, and I'll send it to you through email. All right, well, that was it. Just wanted to do an update on that model because I felt that that was actually a pretty material update that you guys need to, um, I need to make a video about. So enjoy. Have a good one.